so yeah, so you move on through the horde and you yeah, continue like climb climbing over these yeah. piles of gold. And then eventually you you come down to like there's a point where the gold dips down into this valley of gold. And <sighs> looking looking down inside it, you can see that there is um there seems to be almost a shrine built in the center of this gold mound. And uh, there's like a stone pillar that juts up through the gold with a snake thing surrounding the pillar outlaid in gold. And at the very top of the thing is this brilliant, glittering uh, blue gem in the shape of a prison prism. And it floats around, rotating back and forth slowly. Oh, it's floating above the pedestal. Yeah. Oh. And it like, it, it's weird. It's almost like a tesseract. Like it goes in and out of itself Ooh. at odd points. I look at it very closely like it. Hey, I'm here for answers. As his ex appears behind you, and appears over your shoulder, and he goes, Behold, the soul of a wizard. Oh, really? Ooh, that's snazzy. I, I tap it a little bit with my finger. So you move down through the gold, and yeah. like slide down into the valley and stuff, and you, you tap the thing a little yeah, bit, like... and it, it wiggles a bit, and fluctuates, and then like curls around your finger, and then goes back, and you, uh, you start to see like, pictures and shapes in it like scenes and you see like this scene of like these it's weird it's like there's a scene of like these three men in a tavern and they look oddly dressed one of them's bald and they like they like stand up and like cat you know chat to each other and like yell at people in the tavern and it like flips back around and you see another image of the same men like wandering through this underground cavern and there's like a bunch of mucus around on the floor and like um you know, none of them are Henslet, right? No, none of them are right. Henslet. It's, it's weird. And then uh, there's there's at one point where they come running down this long hallway, and you can see that there is a... Um, you can see that there's this odd, like... It's a creature, and it's a tall, man-like creature with purplish, fleshy skin, and it's got two huge eye stalks coming off of it, and a large, triangular mouth biting away at stuff. You know, it comes... Ch Wait. It chases them down the corridor. Wait! Don't worry about it now. Don't worry about it now. And it chases them down the corridor uh, and stuff. What? And then, like, other pictures and images flash through the thing, and you see you see other things. You see, like, two obviously wizards riding hippogriffs, and they're, like, shooting lightning bolts at each other across the sky. You see another... Like, for fun, they're fighting, like, actual serious... You see, you see another... You see another image, and it's... For, for serious. You see another image, and it's, like, this wizard reclining in this throne... <laughs> And uh, these these three pe these three men from the same vision before break in, but they look slightly different than they did before. Like they've obviously been affected by some kind of twisted magic or whatever, mm -hmm. and they like start to fight the wizard and stuff like that. And these images just fluctuate and flicker back and forth. Wow! And uh, the shadowy creature appears again and curls around you and he goes, "The soul of one wizard, but the soul of many." Very exciting. I'll be back. I'm so happy. <laughs> All right. So, I don't know. Wait. I know what you it don't, is. I don't want to take the chance that someone will break in and no, have a do. The images. I you. Do I get the sense that when Hensley said, I will find the answers here, that the answers are in this soul? Uh, you, you don't know. But this is the most obvious, like, center point on this. Perhaps Hensley intended for you to question Azizek, so you don't know. Okay. So... I don't want to take the chance that if I leave now, I mm -hmm. won't get a chance to get back in case, like, the paradigm finds a way to seal the door. Right. I also am suspicious now that the door is a weird gateway, and then if someone breaks it in, uh -huh. it's actually some other place. So I want to try to absorb as much information as possible. Okay. So I'm going to reach out and grasp the soul between my hands and just hold the whole thing inside my palms like this. Okay. And as the next last thing goes, <laughs> <laughs> desperate for power, are we? information my friend <laughs> and even like, more important than power this blue light like gleams out through your hands and he studies you for a second he goes <laughs> ah this is amusing you have the vessel but you don't know how to contain it this is true i'm only an amateur this is not my uh primary bailiwick as it were and he hisses again and he goes and he like uh, the, like as you continue to grasp mm -hmm. onto the thing, like the mist starts to get redder, like a darker oh. shade of red than it was before. And you can see that as his form begins to come more into the mist, so that you can see more of his body. Mm -hmm. And as you look down, his his hands like uncurl, and along his arms, you see several different eyes <coughs> opening up. And within each of those eyes, you can see a whole bunch of little tiny worms, not slugs, right? 
worms Got it. swimming about in the eye. Each one of those worms has another eye in it, and each one of those eyes on those worms has more worms in it, and it just keeps going on oh all God. the I'm way not, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. stop looking because so, it's like making my brain hurt. Those are all along his skin, and he, and he goes, ah, that damn elf. That damn elf. Wait, wait. Is there anything I can do to help you? Are you suffering? And so he, he's grasping onto it, and he's grasping onto the soul. Yeah. The light starts flickering out, and like the light's playing off like these different memories that are playing off into the fog. Right. And it looks like this is agitating as his ex, as oh. if he's re- being forced to remember things that he hates. Oh. Yeah. Like, is it the art eyes projecting images into the mist? That's like flashes out of right. your hands, and yeah. like it goes, yeah, projection. Oh. Yeah. He's like... <sighs> And he like and he gets he like curls his hands up into fists and goes, I must be free. And he like zips off through the mist, and you uh, you see like furious white flashes banging off at different parts in the mist, like loud banging noises. Okay, I like all of this song because okay. I'm not I don't I can I yeah. I do not torture. And he he the the mist like dies down in color, and he floats down and goes, I can't get out no matter how hard I try. We will talk. Perhaps your freedom is nigh. We will see. Yes, Dad. Oh, but yes. I do want to point something out. One of the paradigms of the city is trying to break into this room. <laughs> really? Yes. Let him. Okay. All right. As long as you're okay with it. Because I promised Henslet I would guard this horde. And whatever we come to agree to in the future, we need to make sure that I fulfill my obligation, as it were. I promised Henslet that I would return the bar to him better than it was. <clears throat> I see. Well, rest assured, getting rid of me would certainly make the bar better. You know, we can certainly agree on that. I think we have a starting point for our negotiations. Tell me, back. this man, be- before you leave, yes. this paradigm who's trying to break in, Yes. what does he look like? What form of body? It's very, very old, but it looks like he's modified it in some way, maybe with mechanics or something like that. He mm. seems to be some sort of, like, engineer of some type. And he like his his misty eyes curl up a bit, and he goes, "Are there any others? Perhaps oh, yes. younger?" Oh, indeed. In fact, he has some assistants with him that are in the prime of their life. He like flies up to you, and he goes, what? "If you can get them to go through the door first, I will grant you, or go through the door at all, I will grant you whatever wish your heart desires." I'll see what I can do. We'll see you. We'll see you soon. <laughs> A pleasure doing business with you, Dad Real. Oh. Yeah, I friend. hadn't assumed that Hinslet's uh, apprentice would be so agreeable. This I'm, so I'm famed for, for my decisions. understanding of those who have suffered. Last, I will be the complete one, and not those other <laughs> fools! Okay. We'll talk soon. So, so I'm going to try to find my way out. Right. Like, hopefully so, it's not like, oh, the door is gone and you're trapped in here forever. You find that as soon as you want to get out, you can. Oh. So as you slide down the gold, the door suddenly just is there. And you Ooh. can exit. And you walk out, the mist curling around, and the door slams shut behind you and locks. <clears throat> nice. <sighs> oh, this is great. It's like the holodeck. Computer, exit. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> All right. I will pretend the nothing has happened. The way and I go back to sleep as if nothing had happened. I have been sleeping in the same... Like, building is that? You don't know what it is. It's not in the same ah, building. It's in an author that I mentioned. It, it just happens that one of the ah. gateways is here. As a wizard, you should know. That happens all the time. Okay, day seven. Yes. The ritual yeah. is complete. Dun, dun, dun. The okay. faded die roll. Oh, you already rolled the die. I already rolled. It's a 23. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, I thought there 23. was 23! A... Oh, no, there's more faded die rolls. I just yeah, I was thinking about the, yeah. like, what if he gets a the slug animals. or a little there's minotaur. two rolls. Well, first we can see what type yeah. of familiar it is. Oh, if yes. you're lucky... 23, enough, right? Yes. And your alignment is neutral? He's neutral. Neutral. You, sir, are getting an arcane familiar. Ooh. Looks like spell casting's coming your way. Does that... Wait. More can spell I, Can I cast my cleric spells through an arcane familiar? No, 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 no. It's not a focal. It's an arcane familiar. You get a familiar and a spell. This will be interesting to see what happens. You know what's even more interesting? Because is I, that if you do get arcane spell casting, you might be able to recover spell burn. I don't think Netro is going to be happy with what? you being open to the arcane channels, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> or maybe he'll be very I don't want to be... <laughs> Wait, does Netro not let like you Netro. healing wizards? All right. Now, yeah, now I need you to roll me a d14, which is a d7 with a kicker die. Ooh. Or there may actually be a d14. I don't know if there is. There isn't. There no. Is not. No. There's okay. a d16. And then I will describe the end of the ritual. So, one, two, three. Let's see. This is for the familiar type. Oh, yeah, we got to roll for personality, too. Uh, yeah. So, roll a d20 with that. Well, let's start with the familiar. Okay, the... all right. Yeah. Well, no kick. 
Four. Four. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> no. no great. Okay. It's like a roll personality. Roll a d20. <clears throat> Wonder if it's an ant. Seventeen. Okay. <laughs> so, the clothing has been going back and forth for yeah. a while, and you've passed in and out of a trance <coughs> as you're as you're going along. And then, at certain points during this uh, during this ritual, the slug in your eye seems uh-huh. to be getting slightly agitated and swims around more violently than before. Just, mm-hmm. you know, goes oh, goes around so everywhere. Irritating. Um. So yeah. So the, the clothes, the robes start flashing and stuff. And then suddenly, so Merrick, you're looking down, like, you know, chanting, holding it over him. Your body has been, you know, drained from loss of food, innervated entirely. And then suddenly, you finally finish intoning the final syllable of the spell. You're just like, yeah. And, you know, you, you shoot it out. And then... <laughs> Rota! Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you, you look up, and in front of you, uh, suddenly, you know, there's that cloth mural... So suddenly, coming through the mural, stitching itself into being, comes the wardrobe. It's just like... Whoa. It starts to stitch itself into being, and then a crisscross hatch goes across where the door was, and then goes... And splits, and opens up. This opens wide, and Percival comes bounding back out of the wardrobe. Oh, he's alive! And he goes... Percival. And he goes, oh yeah! And he goes sailing out and <laughs> hits and jumps over Joven and rolls into this ball of fur and rolls under your legs and bumps into the cloth behind and like the whole ripple goes around. <laughs> what and he goes, oh, what did he do? <laughs> and he like rolls That's around amazing. and he, curls is he, is back. He, is he playing he goes, with like stray threads? No, he goes, drunk? boss, I got it. What should we get, buddy? And then out of the wardrobe comes flying this, uh, this tiny little winged creature. Uh-huh. It's it's thoroughly like flutters out passing through and you can see that it's a small uh tiny female form. It looks to be a fairy. Ooh. No way. And it Ooh. floats oh, it floats over and it flits down and it lands and sits like on folding its legs on top of your forehead. And it goes it goes, "Hi there." Uh, hello. And he, and and she like puts her hand on your on your cheek and like rubs it a bit and he goes, "You seem really nice. What's your name?" "I am. It's Joven." Nice to meet you, Joven. What's my name? Um, who's the name of the walker? Uh, F- Freya. Okay. Oh, look Freya at you. Freya it is. That is good. And, yeah. the, and she, like, catches her eyes back and goes, Right, my name is Freya. I'm going to take out a knife and start cutting him out of the cloth. So no, hold, can, oh, hold oh, oh you got something for that? Yeah, okay. hold on one second. So, uh, so like, she, she, like, flits off the, uh, she, like, flits off your forehead and goes flying back down and goes, and turns towards you and goes, Thank you very much, sir, for summoning me here. I promise I'll do the best job I can. Yeah. Or I guess I shouldn't be thanking you. Uh, Wait. I should be thanking somebody higher up the chain. Ah, oh, well, it doesn't matter. And she, like, she like bows again and continues to bow and stuff. Of course. And then uh, turns back towards you uh-huh. and goes, Joven, uh, I can assist you in anything you need. Well, almost anything, you know. And then she uh, she goes and and, if you, and she like flies up. We she have like, to get another bed. Yeah, she like flies up to your chin and like alights on the chin oh. and goes, "If you need anything, just say the word." Don't tell me it's flirty. Is it flirty or is it like uh, no? Like what's what's that word? Uh, uh, sycophantic. Uh, sure. I I look forward to being good friends with you, Freya. Yes. Uh oh. Also, something to commemorate our meeting together. Sure. And she uh, she flies up in the air and flies high and then brings her hands down and goes and throws her hands down and a whole bunch of uh-huh. this dust goes down upon you. Just <laughs> I I <laughs> hope I hope you get sleep. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah. So arcane familiars are magically imbued with a special power of some kind. Uh-huh. They grant the wizard a spell or power that may not have other, that he may not have otherwise possessed. Arcane familiars have these traits. The familiar arrives knowing one randomly generated level one spell that the wizard does not already know. Okay. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Alternately, the judge is encouraged to create an interesting spell-like power, potentially linked to the wizard's patron or luck characteristics. The wizard may cast the familiar spell at his normal spell check modifier as if it were an additional spell in his repertoire. He may lose a spell for a day as normal, regain it the next day as normal, basically the same thing. Oh, okay. so it's, it's the familiar casting that spell? No, the wizard casts the familiar spell. He just, he just learns it from the familiar. Okay. Uh, an attack, and it also has an attack at plus one that does 1d3 damage. It also has health. Yeah, it has health. Mm-hmm. But just, we'll figure that out. It has to roll it. Yeah, uh, so all familiars have 1d4 plus two hit points. So, so roll it. Go ahead and roll that. 
Four. Oh, four. Sweet. Your health increases by four and has four health. Yep. AC 14. They use your saving throws. Oh, that's right. Cool. Mm -hmm. They're intelligent. Good ones. Uh, you his saving mitigate... throws including his stat bonuses? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Just what his saving throws are, yes. Okay. That's why I was saying they don't have really have stats. The right. wizard and the familiar can communicate telepathically. And the familiar is loyal to your to you entirely. Uh, bonus of hit points. And uh, if the familiar has a natural ability, the user gains a plus four bonus when using that same ability. So, for <coughs> example, with this case, the pixie that you've acquired Ooh, pixie. makes you excellent at hiding in forests. <laughs> hiding in forests. <laughs> nice. Uh. But the spell she gives you is something else entirely. Okay. So when she throws the dust down in you, it like goes all over you, and then uh, and then Percival like scoots back a bit and backs away and goes, and like hisses a bit, oh. and then your wrapped up forming cloth simply goes and shakes and then just lifts off the floor, and just goes, and starts to rotate around in the air and stuff, and the right. and the uh, the wrappings and stuff starts to slowly like slip off and roll off like that and stuff. To the point where you can see um, your, like, jerkin's uh -huh. half open. And you can see Merrick's stitching of the MF on there. Mm -hmm. And then slowly, as you begin to flip around, the stitching re-stitches itself. Okay. It just goes... And it stitches around to look like a J. Yeah, J Ooh. for Joven. So, yeah, it's, it stitches around and mm. re-stitches itself. And you float up, and uh, Freya goes, Just a little bit of pixie dust. And up you go! You learn the spell fly. I just have fly. to believe. What? Did you get uh, fly? That's a level oh, one yeah. spell. Are no, you it's kidding? Not. Oh, oh I'm gonna look at my stitch. Is this still a okay. cue or is it oh, back so, to me? Yeah. Rolls. So Percival, in the meantime, rolls up and recovers, and he goes, "Oh, it's a tiny person. I hate those. They creep me out." And he and he like turns around to face you, and he goes, "Boss, I got it." So the wardrobe's still there, hanging open, and Percival turns around. What? And Percival turns around, and he goes, "I got it, boss." I dived through the thread and I ripped it out of the threads of history. What did you rip out of? And he like that's in there. And he like scampers around and like scampers back into the wardrobe and dives in. And with his teeth and his like paws, he starts to, like grab and push out. And he pulls out this. Okay, here. Can you help me visualize? Is it what? like so? The wardrobe is open, right? Yeah, wardrobe's open at the far end. You're on the other side. And like, There's what is in the space that would be clothes? There's, it's just oh, a bunch just of clothes. Piles and it's piles just a bunch of clothes, clothing? like you always see. Okay, yeah. all right. But but Percival right. dives into the clothes for a moment and then comes back out and he brings out this red looking jerkin. And he like, ooh, we're all gonna have red jerkins now. What? Wait, have I used that I don't yet? Have a red jerkin. Didn't you? Do I thought you did. Oh, maybe you don't. It's either that or the shield. I think you use the shield. I use the shield. Okay. Well, that's fine then. But it it, it doesn't matter either way. So he pulls out this red looking jerkin and yeah, like I use the shield, red doublet. Hasn't been used it's a yet. doublet, okay. Yeah, so he pulls out this red-looking jerkin and pulls it out, and he flops it down on the floor in front of you, and he goes, Magical cloth! Time to create some new wardrobe item! Amazing. It's... I can feel its power. Yeah. Well, at least you can. But my rune, is my rune back to normal? So as you look down, the rune restitches itself. It's... and goes back to what it was before. But it looks, it looks like that when I cast it? Yeah, and then it just restitched itself back to the MF. Like a Q with a little z mm -hmm. O on the bottom? Yeah. Wait, so... Hmm. Percival wants you to cut hmm. this jerkin into something and make no, it into something else? No, no, no. So he, he looks down and goes, Come on, the cloth's already made. You just gotta put an ability into it. What do I do? So, so he goes, you don't have to decide now, but, you know, let's work on it. Yeah, let's think on it. Where Isn't a doublet and a jerkin the same thing? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh... What would a jerkin get? So... Why would it go? Why are you still thinking about that? Yeah. Um, so Percival turns around and he goes, Well, welcome to the family, Joven. Good to have you. Wait. I can speak what? to Percival? Mm-hmm. Because I, I was confused when she sp spoke to you. Yeah. Well, I mean, can a sprite just speak? A pixie? Yeah, a pixie. They they can, but it communicated telepathically. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. Percival, you could talk? Oh, yeah. Wasn't that not I, obvious? I, no, I don't think so. Hmm. Okay. I uh, mean, he would talk to you, but I didn't know you could just talk. So you're still, like, floating up above in the, in the air. Just, <laughs> yeah. Whoa! And then suddenly, Whoa. He, and then suddenly uh, Percival uh, goes, Frey, could you All just right. put, you put me down? You want to uh, finally in this show, boss? 
What do you mean by end the show? Well, in the spell. Close the wardrobe. Oh, yeah. Okay, so all the cloth around it goes and swirls up and goes and goes shooting back into the wardrobe just and swings in and uh, as the clothing goes flying back into the wardrobe the clothes on either side get pushed apart for the briefest of moments and just for an instant you can see the back of the wardrobe and Percival freaks out for a second and goes oh boss don't and it's too late and you just look at the back of the wardrobe and then on the back of the wardrobe you can see a horn on the back of the wardrobe but it's set up like a hook and it's got some clothes hanging off of it. And then the warp drove slams shut and disappears. The big demon uh, of clothing. 